All right. Hey guys, um, I thought I'd give this YouTube recording a try. So this is my first attempt and we'll see how it goes. Uh, I recently wrote an article on Towards Data Science about what in my opinion is the most undervalued Python library in the standard library. And I thought I'd put together a quick short video on actually walking through some of that code. So we got our Jupyter Notebook here and one of the first things I talked about was the name Tuple. So to get your name Tuple, you go from collections import name tuple and again since this is all from the standard library you won't have to install any outside packages it's all just ready for you in the standard python so you know traditionally what i've seen is people might have this big features list and uh, they append things to it, like one two four five uh, maybe you have a name in there like we'll put my name in there and it's just a bunch of features um, and you could even make it a matrix, but that gets really messy really fast. So instead of doing all that, it's a lot better to be able to have access to some type of feature name. And there's a lot of ways you can do this, but I find that the name tuple is, is a pretty nice way. So instead of having this raw list, we can set a features named tuple. So we do features named tuple, and then we call it something, we'll call it features. And then if you have its name, you decide what you want to be in that name tuple. So we're going to say, okay, we have a feature for age, a feature for gender, and then lastly, we'll have a feature for name. And once you have that defined, you can then start creating name tuples, essentially, which are somewhat like lists, but you can now access them via name. So if I wanted to make a new row, I could do row features. So I'm calling that thing that I just defined. And then the first thing I have to put in there is age. So I'll say age is 22. We need a gender and I'll say male. And then we'll say name is Tyler. So now when we print out this row, it's one looks a lot nicer. And two, instead of accessing things by index, like in the beginning you do features, um, you know, zero will give you back one. Now we can do features or we'll do row dot age and we get back 22 so you can access the features that you're wanting to a lot easier uh, when people are reading your code it's a lot easier for them to read in general it's just a much better a much better format for storing your features now this is not the only way obviously to do it but I do think it is a very simple way that makes it easy to take your list to a name tuple and allow you to much have much cleaner access to your data so the next one I talk about or wanted to talk about was counter. So if we go ahead and let's enter, uh, let's make this a markdown cell. We'll just say counter. So looking at the counter, counter I just think is a really cool feature that a lot of people aren't aware of in the collections library in Python. So if we go from collections import counter, what counter does is it is it counts things. So if we have a list of ages, you know, 22, 21, 12, 15, 13, maybe we have a bunch of 22 year olds for some reason. Um, maybe we have some outlier data, 203, um, 14, 15. So we have this age data we've created. And a lot of times you might just want to see value counts, like what's the most common thing in your, in your ages. And in pandas you can do that very easily, but you might just have some raw data here you want to quickly do it. So now what we can do is we'll make our value counts equal to a counter on our age. Now you've got this thing stored and we can look if we print it out. It will show us a list, which is basically a dictionary, not a list, where the key is the value and the value. So the key is the value from our ages, I should be more clear. And the value is the number of time that age showed up. So we can see 22 showed up four times, 21 showed up one times. And we can just go through here. Since these are all one, it just kind of picks its own order. And then you can also do value counts dot most common one. So there's the most common. Here's the second most common. And it just makes it really easy to quickly get a sense of what data you have and what the distribution looks like for 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 any data you have. And so I found that really useful. It's a lot quicker and easier than trying to load it up into a pandas series, and it's a lot less resource intensive intensive. And so kind of finished out this video um, that follows along with the post I did on Towards Data Science. Let's take a look at the default dick. So default, sorry, default dict. 
So, you know, standard dictionaries are great, but they do have some downfalls. Um, and a lot of those downfalls, I think, are fixed by the default dict collection. So from collections import default dict. And what you have here now is a way to define a standard value. And let me kind of walk through that. So if we go my default dict, and we're going to set it to default dict, and if we're going to put a list in here, it now means that the standard value, when there's no value, is an empty list. So if I go to my default dict, it has nothing in it yet, but say I look for the key Tyler, it's just returning back an empty list. If I change list here to int, now it's giving back a zero. That's the default for int. Um, and those are the two most common that I've seen. So basically what you're getting here is when you query for a key that's not in there, it gives you back a default value instead of throwing an error. And there are other ways to, to solve for this, like the dot .git on a standard dict that will do this, but this in my opinion is just a lot cleaner, especially if you have a list and maybe you want to create a value for ages. So we'll call ages. So originally it's just going to give you back this. Um, and for whatever reason, maybe you have this list of ages that you want to put into a dictionary. So we can go over four age in one, two, three, four, five. That's our ages, a bunch of young people. So you now you can do my default dict ages dot append age. Now we go to my default dict and go to ages. You've got that list recreated because when it first called ages, it returned the empty list and then it just goes and appends it. So this is already an empty list even though it hasn't been defined yet and you can just quickly easily go and append it without having to do like a dot git and returning an empty list or having an if else to account for the uh, first condition when it's not found. So I found this really really useful. It's also obviously useful in um, the int case where you want to do a counter for some reason. So here this might be for i in and maybe you just want to count it up um, total count. Now you can just do total count plus equal i and if we come down here, 15. So there again, you're not having to handle any special cases for when you first call it and it's empty. It just assumes a zero the first time it's called if it can't find it and uh, returns that. So really clean. And again, if you're looking for things that aren't there, it won't throw an error. It will just return the default value. So there you have it. Hopefully this quick video walkthrough gives you a sense of these three useful features. Again, we've got the name tuple, which we can add up here for clarity. Name tuple. We'll make that a markdown cell. We've got the counter and the default dict. So yeah, hope you like this video. Uh, if you have any comments, suggestions, drop them in the comments. Thanks.